Hello guys, welcome back, your friend to play here and uh, today we're going to go through uh, some steps that I've done and uh, I usually do when I back up, I test and pie shrink and then um, burn again and boot the image to test before any release if it's a base or well, whatever. Um, and I'm going to do it in real time, that you're going to see I have a stopwatch on the top uh, that is going to be running for the next three uh, and a half about hours. Don't worry, you're not going to see the whole thing. I'm going to have some portions fast forward at 50 times speed. Um, so the total video should be about 22 minutes. And um, let's say, uh, as you saw the title or the screen on the YT, uh, YouTube video, it was Secrets of 2Play. Basically, it's not secrets, it's just um, the way I do things and for new people it would be a good way to learn how to do the steps and uh, be cautious and for more advanced people I would say it would be just ideas. So anyway, let's get started. Um, actually, we've already started as you can see. And uh, uh, the steps I'm doing is I'm backing up my uh, image first to a file then I'm going to test it with uh, OSF mount, then I'm going to pie shrink it, then I'm going to test again the pie shrink version of the IMZ file, then I'm going to burn it and then do the boot to test that everything is booting fine. So um, every step, uh, as I said, is going to be within that period and I'm not going to try to hide anything, it's just all the steps that I do one by one at uh, real time that's why i call it the uncut version and i wanted you to see with the stopwatch that it's running 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 and while i'm doing all these things so um on the bottom we see the windows uh, explorer uh, folder that i open up and where i saved uh, and i gave a name to the imz file uh, on the right side bottom i have the x2 fsd program that i use and um, uh, when I presented to you the OSF mount and this, this is the, uh, this is the two uh, I'm using when I play around with IMG files that have Linux partitions. And X2 FSD is the one that I need to um, use if I want to mount a rootfs partition. Um, so the in this case, because I'm just dumping, as you can see, the all I need is just the FAT32 partition, the boot partition of the image. So, uh, that's the uh, uh, notice I, I told you about, I kind of forgot about it. So, uh, you see, it's already, um, the read, the dump was successful. So, I fast forward these 20 minutes that uh, passed, uh, so we can move on. And this blinking that you see is because of the UAC, the user access control of Windows. And when you start uh, something like the OSF mount, the, uh, the Win32 disk imager, it just asks you if you want to run it or not. I don't have it disabled, I'm fine, I don't care. And um, so now this is the step that I'm testing the dumped image. So basically I'm just I'm mounting the root FS partition, which is in uh, uh, the most important to me and um, the structure is fine it's opening up so then I just safely unmount the image and close if as I said in the past it doesn't unmount make sure that you close your Windows Explorer or anything that might be affecting that um, where the image is and then it will close safely so I'm starting the next step which is the VM uh, appliance uh, I have. Uh, all uh, the description for the VM Appliances YouTube video has been updated and I'm saying what is the latest versions I tried and tested and working so right now it's 6.1.16.16 uh, 16. and the same with ex ex extensions so VirtualBox uh, so all you need is just install the VirtualBox then you install these extensions and you get my 19.1 Linux Mint uh, VM appliance that has everything and pre-installed, pre-configured 
and you import from the menu of the virtual box once you have that you're going to see what um, you see here the price ring vm and you start it up so now we started up the vm and um, for your reference i've been checking the latest updates on the price ring and the one I have with the VM appliance, the one I'm going to be using, you see, it has the uh, date 08 2020. And uh, I've seen that there was an update on the code on uh, January, this January 2021, but it was not really important. It was just a type of correction on a verb, uh, on a word in, uh, in the comments of the code. And nothing else, nothing has uh, been changed since uh, 2020. It has um, um, extra parameters that you can run. You can actually uh, zzip the image uh, after being fine shrink. Uh, and um, you can have a verbose mode and stuff like that. I'm just doing just the simplest uh, method. I'm just uh, going into the folder that I have. I have the pie shrink in there and I uh, start right click and start the uh, terminal and I type sudo dot forward slash the pi string command and then I just type a couple letters of the image name and press tab it will fill it up automatically and then you just press enter and wait so these 512 gig images took about 20 minutes and from uh, the clean size of 476 it went down to 380 something so um, this version 3 it's about 50 to 60 gigs more due to the new uh, uh, rom set ports rom set have been working so from 336 it went up and uh, once you're done you just close your uh, vm and uh, one tip never start uh, your vm when the win32 disk uh, images are running it will just crash your dump and fail your image so you have to uh, you, you're gonna have to redo it so just do every step separately just be patient and do one by one so now I'm testing again the uh, pre uh, the price shrink image file I'm doing the same thing again I'm selecting the root partition root FS partition I'm just uh, mounting it open it again and I'm just going to go a little bit further in and go to the home Pi retro Pi splash screen and uh, I'm just going to play the boot video just to make sure it's running but since you browse it everything is fine since the image mounts everything should be okay as I said the important thing is to unmount safely don't force it if you get a warning just close any windows explorer window uh, windows or anything else that might be affecting the image uh, file and then safely unmount select it unmount you see it's gone no warnings now your image is safe again so the next step uh, as we said is to burn and then we're gonna boot so um, in my case uh, you're gonna see some minutes a little bit wasted here and the reason is because I had uh, I'm gonna burn the image, the new image on a SanDisk Ultra 2 SSD 480 gig, which I'm gonna show you that how I clean it because it's not an SD. I'm not using the SD formatter. I'm using the free version of uh, um, a Mini Partition Wizard tool, and I'm just removing, deleting all the partitions of that drive. Then I'm for uh, creating a new full NTFS partition um, for that drive and then I just apply that's it nothing else so it has nothing extra nothing left over and I prefer to use the win uh, 32 disk imager it's uh, something that it's sold it so far I never had a problem I have nothing against etzer but I prefer the w32 disk imager um, one thing I forgot to mention before is that uh, you'll notice it took about an hour and a half about to burn the image but there is a bug on the visual uh, 
options of uh, the Win Disk, uh, Win32 Disk Imager, and the developer is aware of that, and they're going to be fixed. It's going to be fixed on the new uh, next version. Uh, so basically, if you, if you notice, once you exceed the one hour of dumping, then the uh, Win Disk reports that is um, let's say 160 minutes, 180 minutes, one, which is not correct uh, time-wise. So that's why I had the stopwatch uh, running at the same time. So basically, if you just ignore that 190 minutes, it doesn't matter, it is going to be fixed, it's just only visual. The program works fantastic. So this is what I was talking about, the mini partition wizard, I select the drive, I delete all the partition, create a new partition NTFS for full, I apply and the drive is ready to be burned with a new image and um, so what happened here is uh, I had already uh, the sun disk formatted but I started burning I always as I said there you have to select on uh, the drop down uh, menu of the WinDisk 32 you select the fat partition uh, letter when you read and uh, again when you uh, write you select the correct drive letter of your empty SSD or SD or whatever uh, drive uh, so you can select then you just browse to your image and then you just type write uh, click on write um, this one I'm gonna kill it because I had uh, been using the USB-C internal port of my laptop which is not as fast as my USB 3 hub that I'm using and uh, I wanted uh, to stop it I'm gonna format it again and I'm gonna connect to the same hub that has my image for getting faster uh, uh, burn times because you know there was it would be crazy to wait for two plus hours usually the best one I get is about 40 minutes for the 512 or 480 and um, I would say for the 480 image and or the previous image and now this one took about an hour uh, to burn it so this is what's happening now I don't want to confuse you it's just that I cancelled the initial burn and I'm just uh, reformatting my SanDisk Ultra as you can see it already has the new uh, structure and I'm creating again a new clean partition full partition NTFS partition doesn't matter it will be uh, destroyed removed anyway because of the new structure of the image file so <clears throat> that was what's happening the last few minutes so nothing to uh, it's just like a personal choice that I didn't want to wait and I wanted to get my clean drive uh, closer to um, or on a bus that is uh, where the uh, IMG file resides so it can be faster uh, for the burning purposes so I'm selecting where my image is there you are As this is a voiceover, um, I was trying to explain something else probably there with X2 FSD. Because I am plugged to the drive and plug it in again. So I'm selecting the correct drive letter, then I browse. To select this is what I'm explaining with these little messages so then I type right and uh, press right and we're just now burning image to the new clean SanDisk Ultra 2 480 gig SSD so again this is at 50 times 
speed fast forward no need to wait so now you can see we're up to two hours 45 minutes about and out of these the 20 minutes as we said it was just when i was having lunch and i forgot about that it was finished uh, reading so basically the whole process that I've, uh, I'm showing you here from uh, reading, dumping, testing, pie shrinking, uh, it's, uh, the whole thing is about three hours. So it's about an hour and a half to uh, dump it, about 20 minutes to uh, pie shrink it and the test is just a couple minutes nothing uh, much and finally the burn one it's another let's say uh, depends on the size from 45 minutes to an hour um, an hour and 10 minutes about depending on which bus and uh, if the image and your new drive are on the same bus and so you can get faster speeds if it's on usb 2 or usb 3 all of this they just matter all these factors are important to get faster speed because i hear people uh, having on Netzer the verify option and have it uh, on external drive and the separate uh, connections and it takes hours no you don't have to wait hours just the the normal it should be about an hour so we're up to three hours 27 minutes so uh, now the next step is because as I said I want to show you that uh, I'm putting the new image uh, you see I mounted and I gave uh, this is the drive that I burned I mount with uh, an XSD I applied a letter to the root FS so I can access it it's accessing fine so everything is okay and because I want to I don't want to stop the video and then try to boot and you think like I'm doing something different uh, actually, I connected my stream device, the other media I have for recording. I connected to my laptop and uh, it has the output from HDMI directly to the Aver Media uh, streamer and then uh, the video uh, displays on my application direct central or recentral um, from the Aver Media that gets direct input from the Pi 4 and I connected the Pi 4 to the Pi, uh, I connected the SanDisk to the USB 3 lower port of my Pi 4 and I'm booting up for the first time. So that's why you see just the black screen for the time being because it doesn't get the initial signal, but once it does the first boot, which expands, then we just continue the second boot uh, and within two, three minutes, you should see the uh, splash screen of the Playbox uh, version 2 uh, booting there we are and as a proof of concept I'm gonna show you I'm gonna exit to the CLI on this and show you the size of this sun disk and then I'm gonna put back my NVMe which I used to dump the image and I go, go again go to the CLI and show you again the full size of the 512 because there are two different devices the one is 480 gig the other is 512 so you can see that I'm not trying to fool you uh, this is the first boot I don't have the controller configuration because it's something I'm still working on but uh, when if I release a base or whatever I usually always reset the controller so you can have a clean uh, experience and you set it up to your liking so there you are, we have the size of the 480 and I'm gonna go to the play, uh, the toolkit and I'm gonna shut down. And I'm gonna connect my NVMe USB 3 device to the Pi 4 and I'm gonna boot again. So I'm gonna exit you see there's no signal because I disconnected the HDMI from the ReCentral and the Aver Media Streamer. I'm going to get out of the uh, full uh, screen. And 
and uh, I'm just gonna make a little bit smaller the window so you can see if the stop was still is running and it will not change we haven't changed anything it's just what I've been still doing so then VM is booting Okay, now you see we're up to 3 hours 36 minutes. I'm gonna exit to CLI. I'm just using a small uh, Bluetooth keyboard. So this is the size of the 512. And uh, uh, for your reference, we're gonna go back to the toolkit. And um, as you can see even here, that uh, the version 3 is already updated to the kernel 5, 10, 17 and the firmware I'm using on my Pi 4 2 gig is already the February latest uh, firmware and the boot files on the image uh, are and will be uh, February Now there's the firmware. I'm going to the system menu. I'm going to the last option that says so the firmware. And there you are, you see that this is the February 16 firmware stable version. And we're gonna go back and power off. So that's all I'm doing guys. Um, there's no actual secrets, I just you know, it's just the way you have to do some things the right way and, the, and one by one, don't be uh, cheating or trying to cheat time because you're just gonna cause only problems to you. Just be patient, everything will be okay. Thank you for watching my friends, bye bye.